SuperKit is basically a full decked out framework in alpha, but it's ready to show you uh, with all the idioms and opinions we have built at Lavenue and we, I brought that into the SuperKit project. So without any yada, 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 let's, uh, let me show you how it actually works. So basically um, there is this repo, the SuperKit repo, and the documentation is still a little bit scarce, but hey, and you can actually create your SuperKit project in a single command. So let's basically copy this thing and let's go here. Let's go to, let me in a special folder, secret special folder here, and let me paste this command in. And then the only thing we need to do is basically here give us a project name. For example, uh, YouTube app SuperKit, something like that. We press enter. It's going to download some stuff. It's going to clone. It's going to do some shenanigans. It's going to generate a secret for you. It's going to do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So now we can actually see the into this YouTube app SuperKit thingy. Let's code into this thing uh, like this. Right. So. The only thing we need to do when we are in this project is actually very simple. We can just do a make dev here. It's all been set up with a make file. Let me close this a little bit here, zoom in for the blind homies. And you can see that the application uh, server is running a development here. And if we click this, uh, you can see that we have this um, beautiful uh, project. It includes Tailwind. It includes a lot of helper functions for you. Uh, basically full, full decked out. So you have even the team switcher. You know what I mean? You cannot ship these things without a team switcher. So that's that. So there are some cool stuff. Uh, for example, we have uh, an authentication plugin that's being built in. It's not 100% complete, but um, I'm trying to figure out the plugin system and I already integrated the out plugin, kind of. So we can go to login, for example, and uh, you can see that you can log into SuperKit. You can change that uh, whatever you want. So the first thing we need to do basically here is uh, make DB up, right? Boom. D, wait, make DB up just like this, press enter. So <coughs> what this is going to do, it's basically going to migrate your database. Right now, SQLite is supported. Of course, you can, whatever, you can do uh, Postgres or MySQL if you really want. But uh, I will make sure these things are integrated in the near future. Like I said, it's alpha, right? So it's using SQLite, it's pretty good. Uh, so now it's basically uh, migrated. So we can do make dev again here. Uh, hot reloading, everything works out of the bat. Uh, Tailwind, uh, your assets are being synced, it's being built, everything just works. Make dev is the only thing you need to do here. So that's that. So basically, if I try to log in, it's probably not going to work. Invalid credentials. Why? Because we have the sign up page uh, and everything works with HTMX. The framework itself uh, has a lot of HTMX support built in because I think it's amazing, right? You don't need to use it, but if you want, it's support it yes so let me do this email here uh, let me uh, first name last name let me do something like at super hunter one do the same thing at uh, super hunter one sign up here uh, no thank you then you're gonna see here email confirmation that's still not working doesn't really matter you can skip that in a config skip verification if you want uh, let's log in again and it's going to be at super hunter one bam and now you can see no thank you what's going on here with this stupid chrome thingy so welcome my name here and this is a simple profile page uh, what we can do is actually what's going on yeah whatever it doesn't really matter zooming and all that stuff um gg so let's for example you can change this to uh i don't know yoris or something and then update the profile you can see profile su successfully updated if you refresh, you can see it persists, right? And this works with HTM, uh, HTMX and all that stuff. Even validation here, boom, you see, should at least be three characters along. Boom, Anthony, update the profile. GG, well played. You can go back to home. If you go to login here, uh, boom, 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 press enter. You're back at the profile page. Sign me out if you go to login or to profile. Just like an, what you expect from an authentication stuff, right? Boom, you're going to get redirected back to this page, right? This is basically the out plugin. Uh, so what I'm going to do in the future is going to make, if you want, let me know in the comments if you want, if you like this, first of all, uh, let me know in the comments, try it out. If you have problems, let me know. If you also want me to make more tutorials on how to use this stuff, like uh, data tables and all and all that shenanigans in, um, with Temple Golang, with SuperKit basically, uh, let me know. I'm happy to provide these things, right? Okay, so let me uh, give you a quick guide into the system. 
So basically, um, we have a folder structure, app, command, plugins, public, and this temp is basically if, uh, yeah, it's just air creating this folder. If you, be, if you delete, if you stop your server, it's going to delete this folder. So don't worry about that. Right, so the app folder is basically the most important. We have assets which holds, uh, if your, your CSS, it holds your uh, JavaScript files if you really want. You have the configuration package, which is something um, for app specific configuration. You could use the AMP if you really want, AMP files. Uh, but like these hard-coded configuration from time to time is interesting. Uh, that's going into this file. DevDB, migrations, it's all set up with Goose. Uh, you have events, right? There is an event system uh, in place. Uh, you can basically write your handlers. Let me close this a little bit. You can write your event handlers just like you would normally do something with like an HTTP handler, but for events. Um, Check it out in the code how it works. Maybe I'm going to explain a little bit if you have more time. The handlers itself, um, we have the landing handler, which basically renders the home page. Place for your handlers, pretty straightforward. Uh, types, where your type's going, pretty straightforward. And then the views is basically where your components live. Um, this is errors 404 and 500. Some layouts, uh, the landing page, and so on. Then we have these events, right? So basically here you can register your events. You can just event subscribe, call your event and add your handler. This is basically how you would register your custom handlers for custom events. And then we have the routes.go, which basically uh, just holds your routes, right? For example, here it's a little bit like I said, we don't have much time to go into detail here, uh, but you can check the source code. This is basically the authentication plugin, right? Which is, uh, available in plugins and it's a self-contained plugin. I'm still figuring out how these plugins should work, but basically uh, this holds all the views, all the handlers and all the types to get authentication going. The only thing you need to do is initialize its routes, configure it, and that's the only thing, right? Because you can, the way I've built this is that you can add your own authentication. This is basically just sessions authentication. If you want to use something like Clerk or Superbase or something else, you can do that, right? Um, the only thing you need to do is provide this uh, function here. And we need to do a lot of stuff. It's actually an interface. It returns an interface. But like I said, it's way out of scope for now, right? Uh, this is basically where you're going to place the routes that might have an authenticated user. And this where you're going to and it's gonna place the routes that must have an authenticated user, right? So for example, the landing page might have an authenticated user, but does not need to have one, right? So why is that? Because for your uh, navigation bar, if, it's, if, if the user is logged in, you're gonna show, for example, a place to go to his account. If the user is not logged in, you just wanna uh, show, for example, a sign up button or a login button, right? Uh, that's why this happens. You can configure not found handler, which right now just points to 404, and you can configure your error handler, which just logs the error and renders a 500. Straightforward. Um, the cool stuff is basically that if you really want, there is a big make file here. You need to check that out if you want. Like I said, I will provide some more tutorials in the future. Uh, this make file is completely decked out. You can run a lot of stuff. You need to check it out. You can even run a build, and that's basically one of the most beautiful things of using Golang. Using build for production will build, compile your application into a single binary, right? All your assets, everything will be compiled into one binary. The only thing you need to do is just pick that binary, place it on your VPS, or place it on a server and just run it and everything works fine. And if you use something like SQLite, even your database will be compiled, will be embedded into this file. So it's pretty amazing because we at Levenu, we need to make uh, some parts of our application also needs to run on our big investor clients uh, servers. They don't want to use, well, they want to use our service, but they want to have a copy of specific logic on their service as well because they invest a lot of money. So uh, I completely agree. And what we do is we just build a single binary. Right. These guys were flabbergasted uh, once they say uh, once we need, provided this binary and we said, hey, here, this you need to run. And they were just like, huh, what the hell? Do, don't we need to configure something? No, you just need to run this file. They didn't even know what, what, what happened, right? Normally you would configure something like a, a LAMP stack or a, I don't know, some Python stuff or whatever, but this is just one binary, which is amazing. 
right? Uh, it uses Goose for your uh, migrations, right? You can see DB status reset, down, up, create, and all that stuff. Uh, that's all being present here. You can have an, even have a seed file if you want. So that's basically some kind of a boilerplate. But don't forget, we also have some interesting helper functions uh, for your views. Uh, let me actually open up. Actually, that's going to be here. Let me show you on GitHub, by the way, right? Um, because this is, the boilerplate is one, but you, we also export some helper functions. Let me show you here, for example, a validation package. Actually, I can show it you here and out. Uh, handler, for example. You can see it also exports my validation package, uh, which is some kind of a Zot-like uh, ZOD and TypeScript or JavaScript like schema based validation. Why? Because um, you can merge schemas, you can reuse schemas. It's something that we use. For example, we have like a forum where we need to do a big, where, where people, where users can create a big strategy with all parameters. But um, initially, they create a subset and then they create, they fine tune their strategy. So there's basically two forums, but with the same values, right? Uh, and that's why we, with, with this package, you can basically merge couple schemas together. Check out the documentation. It's pretty amazing, right? Um, that's been included. There is also, if you want, you can use the kit handler. Uh, if you do not want to use that, like I said, some people just want to use the response writer and the request. That's perfectly fine uh, because everything works with the standard library, but kit uh, if you really want, I can show you here at routes, uh, for example, here, if you want to use a kit handler, which is something we expose and we attach some cool fun uh, functions, methods on it, like sessions and all that stuff, it's all baked in authentication. Um, but if you don't want to use that, it's no problem. You can just create a simple Golang handler without that, that does not return an error or something and use that. And if you just want to utilize the helper functions, you can create a kit handler, um, this is using Qi, but like I said, this is something that we use. But if you really want, you can change that. Like I said, everything works with whatever you want, right? Uh, for the database, the same thing. Let me show you. Database is integrated, but we are using uh, a bun, a bun DB. But if you want to use SQLC or something, it's pretty simple. Uh, the only thing that the kit helper function does is basically it initializes a plain SQL DB and whatever you do here is up to you. You can create something like a JET or like a, an SQLC or whatever you want to use or a GORM. Do it here and that's going to work. Like I said, some namings still in alpha. Not quite sure yet how I need to name these things. Um, happy to happy to get some feedback. Try it out. Check the code and it would be nice if we could basically collaborate and make this even more uh, amazing that it already is. Like I said, it's something that we use all the time. That does not make that, well, that does, that's, that does not mean that you're going to like it as well, right? Uh, for the people that want to use it, use it. For the people that don't, do your own thing. It doesn't really matter, right? That's basically kind of it. Like I said, I could talk so many minutes, hours about how it all works, but uh, that's a big problem because YouTube doesn't like that. So what I would suggest is check it out, read the documentation. Well, basically read the documentation, uh, read, there is not, ah, there is something, right? I still need to work on that, but a lot of people are basically DMing me and on Twitter and all stuff like, please release it, please make a video. Uh, well, here it is. Um, you can do whatever you want with that. Another thing is you can do your environment configuration. Uh, I cannot open it because VS Code, boom, here, for example. You can change some stuff if you want. It basically generates a secret for you. Um, super kit out, configuration like session expiry, redirect after login. Try it out, find some bugs, try to break it, let me know or make a PR and uh, let me make these things. Uh, amazing. Right, that's basically it guys. I hope you're gonna like it. Let me know what you think about that. The goal of this project is to be some kind of a, um, I don't know, have have people come into Go, have something that they can just spin it up uh, with a database and everything just works, tailwind, uh, even some components, chat, C if you see, this is basically some um, chat CN kind of a team, um, all configured for you so you don't need to do anything. You can quickly start building and enjoy the beauty.
that Golang brings. All right, if you like this video, guys, consider subscribing to my channel, give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments. I also have an HTMX course, you can check that out as well. I'm going to add uh, more super kit tutorials on that course as well. Once it's kind of um, stable, I would say. I'm gonna make some cool, cool uh, extra lessons on the HTMX course as well, so check that out if you're interested. And I also have a Discord channel, uh, so you can also join that for free. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you soon on one of my new videos or live streams. Bye-bye.